Hello, this webinar is intended to provide guidance to districts that may receive a teacher incentive allotment in the 2020-2021 school year for the first time. In this webinar, we will review what is TIA, the upcoming timeline for spending and funding, the requirements for generating an allotment, and district spending requirements. The three goals established by the legislature for the teacher incentive allotment are to reward and retain effective teachers and to recruit effective teachers into the profession. To meet these goals, House Bill 3 established three levels of designations. Teachers earning a National Board Certification may automatically be issued a recognized designation. Districts can also be approved for a local designation system that allows them to issue recognized exemplary and master designations. Some districts may be receiving the allotment for the first time because they have a teacher in their district with a National Board Certification. Once designated, the designation will be placed on a Teacher's SBEC Virtual Certification. Teachers can generate 3 to 32K annually for their district with greater funding available for teachers that are at high needs or rural campuses. Districts must then use at least 90% of the funding on teacher compensation on the designated teacher's campus. Finally, the designations are valid for five years regardless of where the teacher moves. Some districts may be receiving the funding for the first time in 2020-2021 because a designated teacher moved into their district this year. Other statutory spending requirements for districts are that up to 10% can be used by the district for costs associated with supporting a local designation system or supporting teachers in obtaining designations. Districts must also expend the funds by August 31st of each year. The teacher incentive allotment is received by districts through the FSP. The teacher incentive allotment will follow the FSP payment schedule. We will now review the upcoming timeline. For this year, districts who employ a designated teacher and if the designated teacher generates an allotment, this district will receive a report in April from TEA with the preliminary 2020-2021 allotment amount. Districts will be required to confirm the designated teacher's creditable year of service in May. After confirmation, TEA will notify the designated teacher of their 2020-2021 allotment and designation. Districts will be expected to expend the allotment between April and August and will receive the funds in September settle up along with any eligible fee reimbursements. The report received in April will show the allotment generated by the district broken down by campus and by individual teacher. The district summary of finance report will also be updated in the actual or DPE column for fiscal year 21 to match the confirmed allotment report. If this is a district's second year to receive the allotment, the DPE column will be updated to reflect any changes from last year's amount. This may decrease if designated teachers have moved out of the district or moved out of a teaching role. It may increase if the districts have more designated teachers or designated teachers are now teaching at higher needs campuses. A frequently asked question is, should there be any money sent from the previous district to the next? The answer is no. All changes in funding will be handled through the FSP. We will now review the criteria for designated teachers to generate an allotment. There are three criteria for designated teachers to generate an allotment that align with statute. They are that the teachers have a current active SBEC teacher certification, that they are coded as an 087 or teacher in class roster winter collection, and that the teacher serves a credible year of service in the teacher or 087 role. Teachers are coded as an 087 if their primary job is providing regular instruction to students. Positions that are often miscoded as an 087 are 041, 113, and 114. These positions are normally classroom-based, but the role is not providing regular instruction to students. These positions should not be coded as an 087. TEA defines a creditable year of service as being employed and compensated or will be employed and compensated in the 087 rule for at least 90 days at 100% time or 180 days at 50 to 99% of the day. This roughly translates to full time for one semester or at least half time for a year. In this example, Earl Wu is a designated teacher that was previously coded as an 041 in fall PEAMS but moved into a full time teaching role on February 1st. He should have been reported in class roster winter collection as an 087. Does Earl Wu meet the creditable year of service in this scenario? 
The answer will vary by each district's individual school calendar. If there are 90 days from February 1st to the end of the year, Earl would meet the creditable year of service requirement. After the district has confirmed designated teachers creditable year of service, the district will now need to expend the allotment. We will now review the district spending requirements. Statute states that at least 90% is spent on teacher compensation on the campus where the designated teacher works. The most common option is 90% to the designated teacher. The range that we see is anywhere between 50 to 100% of the allotment given to the designated teacher. Districts that do not spend all 90% on the designated teacher may spend the funds on other teachers and classroom instructional staff that provide instruction to students. Districts must expend funds annually by August 31st. The funds are finalized in April and May after the designated teacher is reported in class roster winter collection and districts have confirmed a designated teacher's creditable year of service. Most districts are issuing one to two time payouts after the allotment is finalized. A frequently asked question is what do districts do this year if they have a future spending plan developed for say cohort D? Districts can use an interim plan for this year or they may adopt their future spending plan. Recommended next steps include completing the linked form to ensure that TEA sends the designation report to the right district contacts. Districts should also confirm the credible year of service for designated teachers after receiving the report in April. Districts should also finalize decisions about the amount and timing of TIA compensation. After finalizing those decisions, they should amend their compensation plan and, if needed, amend the budget prior to teacher payout. Throughout this process, we highly encourage that districts communicate decisions about payout, the, both the amount and the timing to designated teachers and stakeholders. Thank you for your time, and if you have other questions, please contact TIA at tia.tea.texas.gov.